Hi, my name is Vita Raya Parvar, and I play for Vanderbilt in the Iranian national team. My name is Kimia Raya Parvar, and I play for Vanderbilt and the Iranian national team. And you're listening to Global Dawn. <laughs> Greetings, everyone, for a kind of bonus episode uh, interview version of Gold Bazan here. Today, I have Kimia Red Parvar and Vida, the younger sister, Red Parvar. You guys, uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, I understand that, uh, Kimia, you, you just got done with finals. So I know that you, you got done with a, with a big grind. Yes, we did. <laughs> just <laughs> yesterday, my, I took my chemistry final. It was great. We also have uh, Vida, who, who is younger sister. How many years younger? 15, 15 months, yes. I graduated on time, but I'm taking like half a gap year and then going in like mid-semester. That's the exact same thing that she did as well. Really? So we both have that same experience, yeah. Going in mid-year. <laughs> So, uh, so I'll, I'll definitely get into that whenever I, I ask about how you guys, you know, chose playing in college and, and so forth. It's been a unique path for you guys. You don't hear, I, 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 I mean, do you ever hear about uh, uh, playing with or against girls growing up who have parents from another country and they plan on representing that country? No, they're usually just like mostly in the U.S. There's some a lot of people on, or a couple of people on her team, like our Vanderbilt team, they play for a Canadian's national team, but you don't usually find that many people playing from like other countries than the U.S. Especially the fact that, you know, it's a country that's still developing their women's game. That, that uh, allows just so much space uh, in, in a culture shock. I'm, I'm sure so many of our listeners know if you live outside of Iran, you know, things are run a little bit differently in your country as opposed to Iran. Uh, but the fact that you chose to represent Iran, it's one thing uh, I'm sure our listeners might, might think of. It's one thing to find a men's player in another country, but then we turn into the realm of women's players. As I said before, Kat Khosrayar kind of opened the door for those who maybe haven't uh, listened to our interview with her or mine individually, feel free to, uh, to, to look that up. She's also been on uh, 60 Minute Sports and has a TED Talk. Uh, and she's no doubt had a big involvement, big influence on, on uh, Iranian American. What was it like growing up as Iranian American sisters in Dallas area? Um, to be honest, I didn't even think about it like I didn't really root for any women's like I didn't even know that women played soccer I just kind of there were just men my dad played soccer in Iran and so um every like Sunday they would have like pickup games with other Iranian men and we would just go out and play um and so I kind of looked up to those Iranian men who played on Sunday because they all played um like on the national team for Iran so I looked up to them um I also looked up to a lot of like English Premier League players and like obviously Messi in um, La Liga and the um, Buddhist Liga, all those players over there. I just looked up to mostly men's soccer. Adding on to what she's saying, I think when we were younger, we definitely, we were involved in the Iranian community, but we identified more as American. I think as we grow older, um, we we're lucky to be in Texas and the Iranian community that we have now, they're very, a tight knit group and we're so lucky and privileged lucky and privileged to be in that group and so we constantly have this form of like like Iranian spirit in that whole thing so I think that it reflects in our game because we're always playing with them we're always talking with them we're always sharing our experiences and we're lucky enough as you know like females to be involved in this like predominantly male group and very welcome so I think that affects you know how we view Iran and the community in our family orientation that we have currently. And at the same time, you grow up in the U.S., you play with majority, you know, white teammates. Uh, you, you grow up in a time in which the U.S. women's team are the queens of the world. They win two straight World Cup titles. You obviously kind of have to look up to that as well as kind of an example, right? The thing, I think when the U.S., I think there's like this type of privilege that they have with soccer because they have so much more freedom than Iran and it's so it's like two different perspectives you learn something from people in the U.S. you know their drive their talent how they work as a team to become better but then you also look at the Iranian team that we currently had and how 
much desire and love that they had for the game. And I don't think you find that as much as you do in the U.S. as you do in Iran, because the, some of those some of those girls were the most uh, they loved the sport so much, and that just reflected in the whole team. So I think you learn two different things when you go into two different countries. I mean, did you feel a sense of uh, added representation, pride, whenever you saw? Uh, Iran represented uh, on, a, on a TV and in, in, in a World Cup like that? Yeah, we would. I think um, our aunts and uncles, we all were here before COVID, obviously, in 2018. Um, we all came into our room and we were just like shouting at the TV. Like every time someone got the ball, I think, um, or the goalkeeper got the ball, we were just like shouting and like we were so so anxious because we really wanted Iran to win. That way, like we, I literally couldn't watch the game. Yeah, so the, the, the game against uh, Argentina and Messi scored like the last minute goal. I just remember everyone was like, our whole family was just devastated. Yeah, I mean we. My favorite player is Messi, and I was just – I was pissed because, you know, he's so good, but that that's – Iran is your country, you know, and so I think that was – it's great to have representation and them being so good and a, a powerhouse, I think, in Iran just really adds to how much we love the game and our national team that we have currently in Iran. Whenever uh, – obviously – many influences with, with women's, but uh, when you're watching the men who are obviously get a lot more of the uh, attention, do you, do you ever kind of take up after them or any men's players you look up to at the same time? I, I love Messi, but I think we're also, we're lucky in the U.S. you get to play with men too. So we, since we were young, we always played with boys and, you know, playing with the boys is such a privilege. They're faster, they're smarter, they're more creative sometimes, especially in this point, this sport currently, because they just, dominate right now and you know the women are a little behind but just getting that and more girls playing with boys I think we're becoming better and better and we're, we're catching up to the level that we think that we should be at. Any of the Iranian players? Like I said we play with so many Iranian players that like there's Hassan I don't know if you know Hassan he's from he was on the national team a while back and he came here and immigrated from Iran um, and he's the head of Texans and he used to play on the national team and we looked up to him because he's such a great coach and such a great player yeah. and we play with uh, a lot of these players on something like Kamal he used to play for Iranian national team as well and we have uh, one of our coaches his name is coach Abdi he would used to coach with Alex Fer or coach in coaching classes with Alex Alex Ferguson so we had a lot of Iranian people who played in these big teams and high stakes and they know what it takes to to do well and so we're lucky to look up to those people because their opinion is so valuable. I, I think some of the listeners when, when they hear Kimya not know about the, some of the men's play, they, I think some of them listening be like what how do you not how do you not even watch them how do you not even <laughs> so so th 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 that's interesting the fact that you know I, you grew up Iranian and you are so successful as a player <laughs> and say that that's that's pretty funny um uh grew up playing you grow up playing at a high level and uh you end up uh, uh attracting the attention of vanderbilt university in nashville tennessee who play in division ncaa division one the southeastern conference which is a very high level women's soccer conference uh, they've developed national champions like uh like Texas A&M, Florida, and just recently you uh, defeated the number one seed, Arkansas, in the SEC tournament final, which was, I believe, the last game of, of the season because of COVID, so they cut it to just um, domestic conference uh, tournaments, and you guys won the whole thing. Um, what led to you getting the attention of a D1 program like Vanderbilt? How'd that come about? So my story is kind of weird because I was originally, um, when I start, first started like playing soccer, I had no intention of going to like, I didn't even know like people went to college for soccer. I just kind of played and then we'll see what happens. Um, so when high school happened and people around me were thinking about colleges and like they were committing, um, I started reaching out to colleges and like I was on a good enough team where I could attract like some high level teams. I don't even know what teams because it was so long ago, but um I was lucky to commit to Brown, I think my junior year with Vita. We were both going to Brown. Like I committed my junior year, she committed her freshman year. Um, and so I was supposed to go to Brown and then over there it's like, everything is financial aid. There's no athletic scholarships. Um, and so a couple months before I was supposed to graduate, I found out we couldn't afford it. Um, it's just, it was just like the timing and the, there's like financial things that 
went into play and we just, it was not the right time and the right fit for me. Um, and so I had to decommit from Brown, which was like literally two months before I graduated, which is really unfortunate. Um, so I had to take the gap year because I, I needed to go to college. Um, so I took six months off and I kind of just, um, there's a local, um, not a local team, but like a university here close by called UNT. Um, it's University of North Texas. And I was like kind of thinking of going there. I got offered a scholarship, but um, I really wanted to go somewhere out of Texas and literally UNT is in my backyard. It's literally where I live. I wanted to go and explore new places. So um, I wanted, to, obviously Brown is like a great school for um, academics. So that's my goal. I wanted to go somewhere with great academics. And so obviously Vanderbilt is one of the best in the country and in the world. Um, so I went to a camp and I guess I did well. Me and Vita went both there. I did well enough that um, Coach Ambrose, um, Coach Darren said that I can come for an official visit, um, unofficial, and then I committed, went for an unofficial visit, and then I just started playing with them. I think my coach at the time, I was playing for FC Dallas at the time, he was good friends with um, Coach Ken, the, uh, the associate um, head coach, and he kind of reached out and was like, there's this good player on my team, she's looking for colleges, and so um, when I went there, they kind of knew about me, but it was just mostly like word of mouth from my coach to to them. Um, but I, when I went there, they had like no impression of me. They had never watched any of my games or seen my practices or anything. So I just went there, not them not knowing who I was. So how do you settle into the team? Um, you, this you just completed your first two years. Um, how do you settle into the team, and and what position did you and and role did you settle in? And, you know, what kind of a, a player are you really? Um, I'd say I like to be – I they see me as an attacking mid, and but I play defensive mid this year, um, which I think is personally, like, maybe where I, where I fit best. I'm a more defensive-minded um, player. Um, but I think, like, for me as a player, I'm really good at keeping the ball and, like, kind of distributing the ball, and that's what you do as a defensive mid, especially on this team. And I was able to I, – I think I had one of the highest passing completed rates on the team. Um, so with that, I think being a defensive mid really fit well with what the team needed from me, and I think playing that position really helped as well. They trust you enough with taking those penalties. Yeah. <laughs> Putting in the same spot, too. <laughs> you guys dominated in possession. Arkansas, by the way, for those who don't know about college women's soccer in the U.S., it is, it is the main, really, a development factory for successful women's players. You know, it's, uh, some of the best women's athletes from so many different countries who represent their countries play college uh, in the United States. You think of... Uh, uh, it, Americans like Abby Wambach, I believe, went to Florida. Uh, Mia Hamm, I believe, was North Carolina. Uh, Dynasty, stuff like that. So uh, when you think of uh, the, the tiers in American women's football, it, it's, it's definitely, definitely the college. And, and the Southeastern Conference, which is the league that contains uh, Kentucky, Florida, Tennessee, uh, Vanderbilt, which is in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, where uh, you guys play, Alabama, Auburn, Missouri, Texas A&M, Arkansas, uh, LSU, Mississippi, Mississippi State, um, and South Carolina. That's that's the realm that we're talking about here, and it's a very competitive conference. Arkansas was ranked number six in the country. Again, these top these top schools produce the most talent, the most uh, U.S. women's national team players, stuff like that. And and Kimya with Vanderbilt defeated Arkansas in the tournament final. And so that, that's something to hang your hat on in terms of, uh, you know, playing here at home and, and then having your sister join you uh, soon after that. But, but off the field also, it's, this, this has been profiled in a couple articles as well. You work to get your teammates registered to vote. I believe every single player in the program, I believe that's 30 of them. And you did so with a PowerPoint? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was me and um, Blue. Her name, her real name is pa Paola Ellis, but we call her Blue. Um, it kind of just happened like in the summer with the Black Lives Matter protests. And um, we were like, what's the best way that we can do to help support our team? And what's something that we can do that's really simple? Um, and I thought of voting. And I just, me and her started making these PowerPoints. And 
we made the PowerPoints, we sent them out to people. Um, and it was like classified by which state each person went to because all the rules are different um, by state. But everyone was willing, everyone was committed and everyone got it done. So it was, I, without the team, this wouldn't have happened. But I was just, the me and Blue were just the providers and they just did everything themselves. So. And you convinced them with a presentation of, of just the advantages, why it's necessary? What, what was that about? Um, basically, we said um, why it's important, um, how important this is to everything that um, this country stands for. This is this country is about democracy and making sure that you're represented. And so when voting is the key principle behind this. So if you don't vote, then you're not being able to represent your voice. And so um, I guess that argument was powerful enough that a lot of people went out and got their votes registered. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pro I, I guarantee you when, when next time you're on uh, you're playing on SEC Network for or some kind of TV or international games. The commentator is going to be talking about that because it, you know, it adds dimensions to you as a player, as if as if you didn't have enough already. Another thing I want to ask about your about the Vanderbilt women's uh, soccer team is they were recently, besides winning an SEC tournament crown, were heavily in the news internationally because of your teammate starting goalie Sarah Fuller who those who maybe uh, uh, weren't, weren't aren't really uh, re refresh on what happened she ended up kicking American football on the on their American football team in in, in their uh, in, in their game and it made international headlines as the first uh, major college football team to have a woman play a in a in a single in a single play on the field. Uh, tell me about uh, from your perspective because they, they they've definitely interviewed her about how that happened. From your perspective as a teammate, what was it like uh, seeing that uh, happen before your eyes? Um, it was honestly, <laughs> I didn't when I first heard it. She told us in the group chat. Um, so I think I don't know how someone found out, but she told us in a group me that yeah, I'm gonna be playing on the team. I'm just kicking. And we were like, wow, that's, that's insane. Like we, ne we were like, that's never happened before, I don't think. And we were just so happy for her. And then for me, honestly, I like Sarah to me is the, like, I would, if anyone had to do it on our team, I think Sarah Fuller is the perfect person to do it. She is so confident. Um, and with everything that she's gone through these past four years, um, I think she's a perfect person to do that and to break records. And I'm so happy for her. And I think, Vanderbilt, the Vanderbilt football team has gotten a star player and I can't wish enough, hope enough that, I know she's playing right now, so I hope that she does well and that she kicks good enough for the team. Um, but it all happened really weirdly. I saw it um, on Instagram and I, I was, I didn't know it was that big of a deal because I don't really watch football. But then whenever I saw all the comments, like, wow, this is a really big deal. And just hearing about Sarah and she's from Texas as well. And she, I think she exerts everything that, you know, women should stand for being confident, you know, and what we're trying to do also with Iranian national team, like uh, push boundaries. I think that she's doing that, but she's doing that in a country that's developed too and I think that's incredible too because she's she's very confident in herself and I think that's what we need to start pushing as well for other women being confident and not being scared to take risks yeah it was I mean from 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 my perspective personally uh I, I grew up in addition to playing soccer I played kicker as a, uh in, in American football as well and I I saw her execution I you know I, I, I listened to what the former NFL punter uh Pat McAfee said about it and yeah, she executed exactly what they told her to do. It was right in the spot where they told where they where they wanted. It was just one play, one kick because uh, Vanderbilt football team didn't get close enough for her to kick an actual field goal. And 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 this all happened because, as as the uh, American football coaches for Vanderbilt said, the their kickers were all out because of COVID and contract contact tracing, and they don't have a men's uh, men's team. Side note, my brother's former high school teammate played on their last men's team for Vanderbilt, and then it was cut in like 05, 06, something like that. So you, so you go to the, the women's goalkeeper. Had, had she kicked be, before? Did you guys know – did you guys see any of this coming? I didn't. I, I heard – I read an article that said that um, Coach KK and, like, Sophie and Sarah would, like, just, like, switch it up. They would sometimes in practice, like – we have an indoor um, – 
fields, like an indoor, like, what is it, football field that sometimes um, football goes and practices on where it's, like, too cold. So we would go in there sometimes. And I guess one practice they, like, went and kicked the ball as, like, as football players to see if they could do it. And I think, I guess Sarah was really, really good at it. <laughs> so I didn't see it coming, but I guess they did. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's kind of like that, not the, it's like you get one opportunity and you make the most out of it. It's, it that's just like the perfect example of what Sarah did. She did that with her goalkeeping this year as a senior, and she did the same thing with this opportunity to kick for Vanderbilt. And, you know, she's only going to do bigger and better things because, you know, she's not scared to do these things. Yeah, Vita, uh, th that's a great point. Now I want to turn things to, to, to you now. You, you graduated was it this past uh, spring? Is it from high school? Yes. Yes, I did. I graduated from Denton High. So you graduated high school in Texas during a pandemic, having to deal with all that, uh, while at the same time, you're getting ready to join your uh, sister at Vanderbilt University. Was that part of your plan as well? Uh, the... It wasn't, it kind of just felt, because she was kind of forced to take her gap year, and then she really enjoyed it. So I was, I was like heading towards the same route. Okay, she really enjoyed it. It benefited her mentally and also for soccer. So I decided to take the same thing. And then this pandemic happened, and I was isolated for however many months it was, and we currently still are isolated without my sister. So it was kind of like a mental challenge for me, because I am so close with my sister and my parents, but constantly being around the same people was hard for me because I like to you know talk to a lot of different people too and so this it wasn't part of the plan but I think it helped me become mentally a, a bit more tougher as well. I think athletically as well? Yes because all, all I can do is, is train so I just train constantly but I have to you know make sure I don't get injured because I'm I'm really injured prone so you know getting to know my body better getting to know my mental state better I think it helped in a lot of ways as well. You guys are deaf. I mean, you're obviously still growing probably. What, what's, what, what is y'all's uh, training, training life like in terms of individually gaining strength, gaining individual skill on your own? How does an Iranian American girl or both sisters uh, develop, how do they develop themselves to get to where you guys are playing, playing division one college as well as representing Iran? I think the number one thing that you can do is always, like for me, whenever I was younger, um, I started when I was really late. I started when I was 10. Um, Which in America is pretty, is yeah, pretty late. Most yeah, most people start when they're like four, like whatever, whatever age. They start really young. So I started late. And what I would do was whenever I was around the house, I would just always have the ball um, at my foot. I would just dribble around stuff. And it really helped me with my touches. Or like when there's a wall, I would just like kick it. Like I would just use um, different parts of my foot, um, my weak foot, just to get like touches on the ball. And um, I think that's what really kind of separated us from people during that time. Um, when I think people just went to trainings and during that trainings, they would train, but outside of it, they wouldn't have a ball at their foot. They wouldn't really do anything. But for us, we would train and then we would come home and we have a ball and me and Vita would play like 1v1 or we would just like pass or we would just have competitions. And I yeah. think that's what really separated us from everyone else. I also think that um, one, you have to test yourself because if you're going to do it for so long, you have to really, really love the sport. And there are a lot of talented people who end up quitting because they realize that this is not something that they want to do. And so finding your love for this sport and knowing that you really, really want to do it is so important for your mental state, because I don't feel like many people talk about uh, mental preparedness and athletes, a lot of people become burnt out when they do it at such a young age. So you have to know it's something that you really love. And also since we were sister, we're so competitive. So she would push me, I would push her. She's good at something I would learn from her. From her. I'm good at something she would learn. So it's, it's good to find that partner or that person or that mentor who can really push you sometimes. Because even though you want to push yourself, sometimes you need others to push you as well. As teenagers, get the attention of perhaps representing Iran. You live in Dallas, Texas. How does this happen? Our dad saw Coach Katz at uh, TED Talk, and then he tried to, he found her on LinkedIn, and then just started sending videos of us to her, and she was like, whoa, who are, who are you? Why are you sending me videos? <laughs> and then she saw her videos, and, and she liked us, and then we had, we had a call, and then we flew to Iran, and we did a camp, and you know, that camp, 
I, I still remember that camp, you know, it was very new to everyone having Americans, you know, even our hijabs that we wore were different from what they wore. Like it was just two different cultures, but you know, we established ourselves on the team and that those girls are like family to us. And so that it just, we just took off, you know, we're like a family here. And then we have another family in Iran. Was your Farsi ready for it? No, it was not ready for it at all. <laughs> we're, we can understand it a lot more than we can speak it. And once we got there, you know, speaking with them, we, we were forced to speak with them. It got better as long, like the more we were over there, but it was definitely not ready. You guys went together? Yes. So you're, had you ever been to Iran before? When we were younger. I think the last time we went was 15 years ago before we had gone there. So we went in 2018, the summer of 2018. But before that, the last time we had gone was like 2003 or 2004. Yeah, we were very young. We barely remembered going there. Yeah. So, so you arrived in, I assume, the camps and all that were taking place in Tehran? Yeah. Yes. And did, I assume your dad go with you? Uh, our mom went uh, with us, not our dad. Yeah. So talk talk about the level of support you have. You just said how your dad is the one that pretty much made this possible. Reached out to uh, Coach uh, uh, Kadayun Kosrayar and and wanted you to represent I Iran. And then your mom goes with you. What, what I mean, what's that level of support like for you guys? I think ever since Iran loves soccer so much, it. Uh, my mom lives, like my mom's side of the family predominantly lives in Iran. So that's part of the reason why that she came with us, but they were so supportive and very proud that her daughters from the U.S. could go in, still represent their country and make them proud. So that was, I think we were very privileged in the sense that we had a lot of support from the Iranian community in Iran and also in the U.S. So it was never something that people didn't want us to do. It was always something that, you know, what we had the opportunity and we had a lot of support. And so I think that's, a big reason why we did so well in Iran as well. Did, did both of you guys initially want to do this? Um, I think I was more uh, open-minded than Kimya was, but I think the more that we realized what it meant or the more that we realized what a big opportunity and just to make the people in Iran and America, like Iranian Americans here proud, the more we wanted to do it. And then when we met the team and we established ourselves, there, there was no changing our mind that this is what we wanted to do. How do you establish yourself in the team? Um, and uh, how, how, what eventually happened as you uh, played games? Um, well, it, it wasn't like we went to the team and everyone was nice and welcoming we didn't expect that as well because you know they they were they were like oh we have enough players here who are good why are we getting people from another country which is a reasonable to say but once we said hey we are good enough and we're only here to help and whenever we you know if they kicked us we kicked them right back and that kind of showed a level of respect as well we, we weren't going to be pushed around and we were only going to be there to help and once we did that and we came to the tournament and we scored goals and we assisted and we won they looked at us as one of their own not someone you know who's like a foreigner or someone who's you know invading their country who, who was playing what position and who was playing when uh and and how did these games go for you i think i don't even remember i think i was playing attacking mid and Vito was playing defensive and then in the games, we would just switch. Like, she would play attacking, and then I would play defensive. Um, but we played center mid together. That's, like, the position that we played. Um, yeah, and we weren't supposed to start – was it the first game was Laos? Yeah, the first game – the first tournament we went to, um, there were two male coaches that I've never seen us play before. Yeah. Um, and they're well-known in Iran. I don't remember yeah. their names. But they, they didn't really – they didn't know us, and they had been with the girls much longer than uh, we had ever – we had never seen them. So they didn't know – if. So they didn't want to start us, but Coach Cat was like, no, they're good. Let's take a chance on them and start us. And, you know, we did really well in that game. What year is this? Is it 2018, I think? 2018. 2018, So, so you guys are what ages at that time? Um, 2018, I was 17, 16, 17. I think I was 18. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so, so right at the age for you, 19. Um, and this was, this was the Asian Cup? Was, is that what that was? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so from beginning 
middle and end, how'd that go for you guys and the team? We, I don't think, I don't think we expected to do as well as we did. We went in that first game and, and we dominated and we scored so many goals. We had so many opportunities. And at the end of the game, I remember that, you know, we watched our film and a bunch of the players were saying like, I can't believe this is, this is how we are playing. Cause we were, they were used to, you know, a lot of teams uh, not like doing what we did to Laos to them, but for some reason it just clicked, you know, with the coaches that we had, Coach Kat and the players and just the chemistry, we just, we just clicked and we, we did so well. Kimi, how did, how did it go for, for you and, and, and your game? Uh, because uh, I, I assume you were, you're, you're pretty much getting done with high school at that time. Yeah. And I think that was during my gap year where I went there. Is that correct? So. Yeah. So how did, what was, what was your perspective of, of the experience? I think that going there initially, like I said, I wasn't the most optimistic, not optimistic, but I wasn't as excited to go as I really thought, just because my views about the hijab are different from um, a lot of, from, I just, I'm not going to talk about my views, but I was just opposed to the hijab in general. Um, but when I went there and I saw, when I went to that camp and I saw how proud that it made everyone here in Iran, um, I mean, here, sorry, here in America and everyone in Iran, especially our family. Um, there was one moment where my grandma saw us on TV and she was like crying, I think. Yeah. Um, and she was so excited. I think that like, that just opened me up. Like I was all committed after that. Um, and when we went to the tournament, there was nothing in my mind about the politics. It was just, this is a game. I want to win this game. I want to win this for everyone on the team and for everyone um, in Iran and in America who are Iranian Americans. And that's all I was concerned about. How, how did it physically feel putting on the, uh, putting on the whole uniform? It was, it took like a good 10 minutes. Um, it was really hot. Um, a lot of the times my hair would show. And I, I remember one time during the game where, my, like all of my hair, like you could see all of my hair. Um, cause just because of the hijab that we had. It's like playing a game before you play the game. Like you have to just thick cotton and having it, and you haven't even warmed up and you're already breaking a sweat. And yeah. you know, you have, you're trying, you head the ball and then you have to pull your uh, scarf back up before you can, you know, go back to the ball. So like, it's like playing another game while you're playing a game and it's doing it is so much harder than it looks and so like the first time when we trained with the girls were like how we were gassed yeah we, we couldn't were, move we were so tired because it's so heavy it's not like th thin dry fit you know cool compression no they, it's they don't hot. offer they don't offer anything it's like that in and yeah it's like it's very difficult so there's no uh i mean there, there's no polyester equivalent like like for example uh you know folks over here they want to wear like a neck gaiter it's like a thin little polyester thing you can put up their face and put it over their head or whatever. You guys didn't really have any option for that. You just got to no. deal with that. No. And we had to wear tights under our long shorts and long sleeves under our long shirts. And we have to wear, it's like layer. In 90 upon, degree weather. Yeah, and, and it's humid. Ocean. And it's like layer upon layer just so, you know, just so we can play a game. Sounds like hydration becomes the name of the game after a while. Yeah. So many people were cramping up. And I remember in the, Oh, this was the other tournament afterwards. Um, I was playing against Korea, and then I, after the game, I, I vomited because it, I was just so hot and humid. Like, after the game, I was like, I was dead. So you're, so you're dealing with that adversity to begin with. You're dealing with the adversity of making sure you can communicate uh, in Farsi, making sure you can get the respect of, of all the, the girls who are already from Iran, and you guys are not. And then putting on the clothes to make sure that you're, you're following all the, the, the Federation guidelines. At what point do you ha uh, does winning the game finally take over? What, I mean, what was that adversity like with, with having to be reassured by either family, coaches, whomever? Did, did it feel still worth it? I think it, it was to a point that we love, like, 
once it doesn't matter what we do that involves soccer, whether it's like we're playing with children or adults or a national team game or a club game, when we step on the field and it's time to play, we always want to win regardless. So I don't think that was ever a question in our minds, whether like, oh, is this worth it to win? Like, I think we are just programmed to always, always want to win in what, whatever we do. So I don't think that was ever an issue. And, you know, winning as big as we did for the team that we did, for the coaches that we did, it was, it was so rewarding. Kimmy, anything to add to that? She said perfectly. <laughs> Kimmy, what is, what is your current situation with uh, any of the national team? You're dealing with college stuff. Have you been in contact with them at all during this? Um, I think there's been a lot of changes. I'm not sure with like the head coach situation. I think Coach Cat is – I don't even know if they have a U23 team or a national team. Um, but when I was on the U19 team, I, U19 team, I think they did call me up to the full team. But I was just too young at that point. I was 18. Um, playing with, like, 25, 26-year-old would have been, like, a little bit too much of um, experience. It would have been a little overwhelming. But I recently haven't been in contact with them, especially with everything going on um, COVID-wise COVID and – Iran and here sanctions. yeah and sanctions um I haven't really been in contact with them to be honest so none of them have reached out to you or your dad or to anyone no I think we uh my dad has talked to coach Kat a little bit but it there's so much politics and involved with the communication between U.S. and America that it's very difficult to just put that aside and only focus about soccer so you know that has also been a struggle yeah I know they've delayed the a, uh, a Asian Football uh, Confederation has, has uh, delayed um, World Cup qualifiers, obviously, for women. So that remains to be seen. The next Women's World Cup is not until 2023, thankfully, so that we don't we shouldn't expect that to be really delayed. But both of you guys, I mean, would you accept another call up in the future as both of you guys continue playing with Vanderbilt? Yeah, I, I think so. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> How does, how does your college handle that? What, what do they tell you? They 100% support it. Um, when I first went there for my gap year, I mean, when I first got there after my semester off, I had only been there for a couple months. And they were wholeheartedly supporting me about, oh, we can figure out a way to deal with your classes. Um, we just want you to have this experience. And just me being there a couple months and the counselors just accepting that and helping me through it just shows how much they're willing to help not just me but everyone else on the team because there's Madia and there's the Canadian people on our team. And there's Layla too. Layla, there's Layla, Layla yeah. Iranian. Yeah, yeah tell, tell me about uh, uh, Layla, like all about her because th she is another Iranian on the same college uh, team as you guys. We haven't really uh, talked about her yet. Talk to me about her. She is the funniest, one of the smartest, kindest people I've ever met. I don't think I've related. She's one of the most relatable person people I've ever met in my life. Not just because of like, she's also Iranian, but also just like how dedicated she is to the sport. She is so hardworking. I don't think I've ever met a more hardworking person than Layla. Um, and I can't say enough good things about her. She's just one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. Layla Azari is is her is her full name. I, I mean, I don't want to speak for her, of course, but uh, do, do you know if uh, she's been involved with uh, any anything with uh, Coach uh, Cat or or anything with having to do with uh, the uh, national teams? I think she's had interactions with Coach Cat. Um, we've definitely she's definitely. I think Coach Cat has reached out through me to get to Layla, but I don't know how those conversations have ended or what progressed after that. Yeah, she, she's uh, trying to do med school as well. So that's a whole nother thing that she has to balance with just Vanderbilt and self and then school and soccer. Yeah. So her plate is very, very full. Yeah. Do you guys keep in contact with your Iranian teammates? Yeah, we do. Uh, we Instagram, what's up, you know, but also, you know, there's still that language barrier. So it's very hard to, you know, like text through Farsi and you get your message across. Is there anything you you said that you'd be glad to return to the national team if the if the if it became convenient enough I guess what what are you guys looking forward to with that with uh, any future Asian campaigns Olympic campaigns stuff like that what are you looking forward to just I, representing our team just representing Iran um, 
seeing how far we can get in whatever tournament we're in. And there's a lot of very, very talented younger girls. And so coming over there and maybe just helping them, mentoring them, maybe getting them to colleges here if they want to move, that, that would be something very big and something that I think would just only help um, the Iranian national team, you know, get them into colleges here so they can play in SEC, so they can, you know, play against these top U.S. players and come back and, you know, just only further the Iranian women's program. You think some of them have the potential for that, for playing soccer yeah. college? They, they are so talented. The, the, the group that we have now and the young group, they're, it's, I think every generation there's, it becomes more and more talented. And so watching that and, you know, just being able to help them, that's, I think something that we're obligated to do as well. When do you see Iran qualifying for the Olympics in the Women's World Cup? When do you see? Do you see that during your playing career? Probably. I don't think I, it's just that we're so behind with, you know, opportunities that they have in Iran that it wouldn't seem realistic. I think that we have the talent and the desire, but so few opportunities that there has to be change in order to, you know, catch up to these countries that have had 60, 70 years of experience ahead of us. So realistically, no, but maybe in the future with things that we do to help this Iranian team. So but we can only hope for the best. And you're, and you're trying to be part of that, part of that change through yeah. the so Coach Kat is someone who did that, and so we learn from her, and only just you know passing it down. What do each of you plan to uh, pursue then, if if not just athletically, definitely academically? You're at one of the one of the most prestigious academic schools uh, south of the Mason Dixon line. What what, what are you, what are, what are both of your um, you guys' um, academic goals? Right now. Um, I'm doing MHS, so it's Medicine, Health, and Society um, at Vanderbilt, um, but I want to do pre-med. I want to see if I can go into medical school, um, so I'm taking those classes, and hopefully I can become a doctor someday. What, you, MHS? What, what is that again? MHS. It's, it stands for Medicine, Health, and Society. It's kind of like an overarching thing that has anything to do with um, like medicine. Like You can go into the medicine field. I mean, you can go into pre-med. You can do the business side of it, um, insurance, all that stuff. It's it's a very broad topic I have in about. When I hear mess and helping societies, I I, I think of stuff something like Doctors Without Borders. Yeah, yeah. And they, they've had to play a pretty critical role in, in the past in the past nine months. Yeah, and this <laughs> pandemic has kind of you know made you understand which jobs are you know if you want to make an impact in the world, which jobs are very important to just everyday people, you know having someone like underlying heart conditions in our family, we, we don't want anything to happen. So maybe this has inspired us, you know, help us with the, our career path. And, and, and what, what are your academic goals, Vita? Personally, I, I, I think soccer is one of the very few things that I throughout my whole life have constantly enjoyed. So I would hope and really think I'm going to pursue it professionally but I also I'm at one of the most pre prestigious schools and I want to you know get the most as I as I can so I want to get you know probably pre-med as well maybe and see if I can do both. So you guys both have interest in pre-med you both can play kind of a, a mid attacking and defending role on the field you've both represented the country of, of your parents in Iran with pride. You both are about to be also on the same college team. Uh, you both played, and I believe the same club systems growing up. Yeah. Who's the best player? I think she's better <laughs> than me. I think she, I always, whenever someone asks that, I always think she's better than me because I just watching her play and grow, it, it's been, she's always inspired me. I wouldn't be the player I am today without her. And I can a hundred percent, admit that so I always think she's going to be better than me no matter what she used to not say that when we I were used little. to not say that when I was little but that's because I I, I was I was <laughs> uh kind of cocky for no reason I wasn't very good she was very arrogant but I think the thing is that we're so it's when you say that we're we're very similar 
um, on paper, but we're so different um, personality wise. So there's so many things that she's good at that I'm not good at that she'll help me with. Um, And there are a lot of things that I'm good at that I'll help her with. So it's kind of like, I don't think it's like who's better, but who we both contribute equally to us. It's funny because when the teams that we played with, they're like, oh, you and Kimia play so similar, like so similar. But I notice. Like, I feel like we play so differently. Like, I notice the things that I do that she doesn't and the same things that she does that I don't do. And so I think it's, you know, it's just a matter of perspective, which player or which style you like more than one other. Because I'm more of a dribbler. She's more of keeps the ball. But we're both very technical and we both are strong and a lot of the same things. And you're both capable of uh, good placement of goals from long distance and short distance, as the videos will tell. And I'm sure you guys will, I'm sure on your own, you're still, you're still going to continue to uh, uh, battle with each other, whether by yourselves or, or in, uh, in training. Is that right? Yes. 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 Whenever we're on opposite teams, it's like it, nothing else matters except being that person. That's how it's always been. You'd rather play against another in training than with them? Honestly, I'd rather play with her just to not have the headache of like trying to beat her. But when we do play against each other, because sometimes – you know, we'd, if we put, the, put us both on the same team, we'd be too strong of a team. So yeah. they'd put us on, against each other, and then, you know, we, it, all chaos would break loose. I'm going to ask a question for one for Iranian fans and one for Vanderbilt fans. And I guess for the Iranian fans that watch you at Vanderbilt University, what do you want Vanderbilt University fans to remember you guys by? That is a good question. <laughs> I'd have to think about that You don't question. think about that much. You just take no. it day by day, I guess. No, yeah. You kind of do go as you do. I haven't, I haven't, you know, been implemented into the program, but she has. But watching her do that voting initiative, because she never was someone who did much, like, in our high school. She wasn't very super involved because of soccer. But watching her, you know, be excited about things that she used to never be excited about and doing those things, I think that question is very, like, there's so many things that we could possibly do. And I don't think we'll ever know just like right now, but I think we'll figure it out as we go. And I think that's kind of a thing that we do. We always figure things out as we go. We never always have a plan or like a straight plan, but we just want to have a positive impact with the school and with the players that we have and how close we are and how, you know, good of a family we have. We just, we just want to, help the future generation, you know, the same way we did with Iran. We want to do the same thing with the Vanderbilt program. Kimi, it's clear that uh, the Vita uh, likes to explain things for both of y'all and you kind of go with it. I want, I want to know, I want to know <laughs> from your side, what, what do you want Iranian fans remember you and your sister by with your contributions? I just want them to remember that wherever you live and wherever situation that you are with us being from America, um, us still being Iranian though. We take pride in our culture and we take pride in everything that's happening um, in Iran. And we're aware of everything that's happening in Iran, um, that we always support everyone in Iran and we support everything that we do. And with everything that we do, um, with my voting initiative or with us playing in Iran, we always have that in mind and we always try to make them proud with everything that we do. Hi, this is Kat, and you're listening to Golbezan, and I hope you continue listening to their amazing podcast. Thank you all for the support. Love you, Golbezan.